Hello there, guys. What is going on? Son of Chelsea back here again for my rational perspective on West Brom 3, Chelsea 3. Wow. What do you make of that game? Um, I hope you guys have calmed down. Um, trying to react to that game and analyze that game, I think, is very difficult because two extremes, isn't it? And it's the two extremes of emotion because at half time, all of us were in shock. I was definitely in shock. I don't know about you. Uh, frustration, anger, dismay about what you just seen in the, the opening 45 minutes. Um, but then, of course, the amazing comeback, scoring three goals in that second half and claiming a point from a pretty terrible situation. I think it's it's all balancing that for me between not getting too overjoyed with that second half in the sense that I think there are massive, massive concerns that we need to talk about, um, especially in that first half. And some of those can be rectified, I'm sure, by certain players coming into the team and maybe replacing others, but still major concerns of how low that performance was in the first half. One of the worst I've seen in recent memory by Chelsea. But then, of course, you have to give praise to the character, the response in the second half to come back from that very difficult situation. And for the academy players to step up, Callum Hudson-Odoi, uh, Mason Mount and Tammy Abraham. I think that's a big thing for me. All those three players made in Chelsea, uh, saving Chelsea tonight. So, I think you've got to give praise for that as well. And to come back from that difficult situation is big. I think that looking way back to me with, with the starting eleven, which does feel with a game of, of sort of that amount of events within it and sort of uh, momentum swings as well. Um, looking at that team that Frank Lampard selected, there were surprises within it. Of course, we saw the, the attack that we wanted to see. Werner, Tammy, Kai, Mason, the midfield two of Kante and Kovacic. But the defence was the biggest surprise for me. Thiago Silva, who just by this stat from Opta I picked out before the game, uh, at 36 and four days old, Thiago Silva is the fourth oldest non-British Irish player to make their Premier League debut. And of course, he was given the captaincy on his first Premier League start, a massive call by Frank Lampard, alongside Andreas Christensen, a player I did not expect to feature within this game. Uh, of course, there was some concern or doubt over whether he was uh, still suspended for three games after that red card. It was only one game which he served in midweek against Barnsley. But that was a surprise to me, considering Fakayo Tomori getting his opportunity against Liverpool and against Barnsley. Uh, Kurt Zuma, for me, at the start of the season, being a very dominant centre-back. I don't know if there's anything in terms of injury or fitness issue, but to not see Zuma even in the squad was a massive shock for me. Marcus Alonso starting at left-back. I could sort of understand it with Lampard being cautious, but then to not see Chirwell on the bench as well was a surprise to me. And of course, it cost Chelsea with Marcus Alonso playing, as we saw in that first half, because that first half was absolutely dire. Um, as you know, I don't like to go too much into hyperbole on this channel, but it, I mean, it was one of the worst uh, displays I've seen from Chelsea, uh, really. I know we did create some opportunities, but individual mistakes, individual performances that were way off, so far below the accepted standard by Chelsea, that third goal pretty much summed it up. I think the third goal, so the first goal, Marcus Alonso, a couple of minutes into the game, heads the ball to a West Brom player, exposing our defence. It was such a sloppy, poor, unenforced error. I mean, he didn't have any pressure at the time, heads the ball, and of course, Callum Robertson goes and scores. And it's, it's a good strike, to be honest, but still, there's concern over transition there. You know, when we do lose the ball, who's tracking back? Can we cover space? Can we uh, limit the amount of space they have? It's a good finish, okay? 1-0 down. Second goal was an absolute disaster by Thiago Silva on his Premier League debut. Um, and then it's 2-0. For me, at 3-0, um, especially when you've just seen one of your teammates uh, make that mistake, it's about collectively getting together. For us to concede that third at a set piece, the first set piece goal, I believe, conceded this season. Um, so static, so passive, no fight, no desire. Those are pretty basic and cliched words when we talk about football. That's the one that angers me the most. That was really where you felt like this hasn't just gone from a bad day. This has gone to a disaster now. This is crisis point for Chelsea. And I think a lot of us at half time were sitting there and I could already hear like the echoes of the aftermath, you know, the criticism of Lampard, concern over his job. You know, Chelsea fans, we've been here before with many managers and, and you sort of feel like when you're on a precipice of something really awful and, and a sort of, you know, echoes of the 15-16 season under Sarri, the 6-0 and stuff like that, disasters. So then coming into the second half and seeing Frank make two changes, obviously Marcus Alonso. I mean, Marcus Alonso, that's one of the worst performances, individual performances I've seen from a Chelsea player in a long time. I think it rivals Bakayoko's performance in the first half, first half an hour before he got sent off against Watford in 2018. Really poor. And you have to wonder with Ben Chilwell, basically you'd say fit, ready to go. Um, even with Emerson, his performance in midweek against Barnsley, that could be one of the last times we see Marcus Alonso in a Chelsea shirt because it, it was just so bad. And you can understand Marcus Alonso, the frailties within his game where, you know, he gets done on for pace. But it wasn't even just that for me. Positionally, 
all over the place, so poor, and it exposed Chelsea so badly in that first half. And you you forget instantly about the good chances we made in that first half. Tammy should have scored a goal. Werner uh, hit the bar early on as well. And you felt at times, I thought Kai was getting into the game. Reese was obviously dominating on that right side and, and was putting in a lot of lovely balls into the into the box. Chelsea just weren't capitalising on them. At 3-0, though, you're like, where does where can we benefit from here? It's just it's it's trying to limit the amount of goals we concede here. Maybe by some miracle we can get back into this game. Frank makes two changes. Dave coming on at left back and Callum Hudson Odoi coming on the pitch as well for Matteo Kovacic. Um, in terms of formation, I mean, by the end, I wasn't entirely sure, to be honest. It was just throwing all the attackers on there as possible to get the goal, but it did look more like a 4-3-3. And Callum uh, got the got the chance with both hands, grabbed it and took it and I think really made an impression tonight um what a moment for him personally with all the speculation this week narratively it's typical football for these things to be thrown up you know Callum all the talk of him going to buy in being frustrated the lack of minutes he's walked on that pitch in the second half and he's turned the game in in truth he scored the second goal of course Mason Mount scoring the first, a Lampard-esque uh, drive from deep. I, I remember uh, Lampard scoring a goal similar at the Hawthorns at that end years and years ago. Um, what a moment from Mason Mount. And I think it just showed the character of those players at a moment where Chelsea weren't really creating a lot of opportunities. That was the massive concern. But for Mason to step up there, have the character to, to just try something, to just try a little bit of expression and, you know, try and go for goal. He gets his team back in the game. It changes the game. And then Callum Hudson Odoi's goal was wonderful. I think it's the best goal we've scored this season so far because I think it was interplay. It was Callum Hudson Odoi driving from the left. I believe Mason was involved as well. A lovely one too uh, with Kai Havertz. Kai Havertz with the perfect delicate touch right into Callum. And that's where you want to see Callum. And he finished it brilliantly, expertly. It's 3-2. Um, of course, Frank makes another change. He brings on Olivier Giroud for Thiago Silva. There were times where West Brom got opportunities on the break. It did become a little bit, as I said earlier, just throwing as many attackers on the pitch as possible. Finally, we got the equaliser right at the end. Tammy Abraham to finish off with Academy players scoring a hat-trick of goals uh, tonight. Made in Chelsea, this draw, to be honest, and this comeback, to be honest. Um, of course, it was another great shot by Mason Mount. Palms, and then, of course, Tammy Way should be right in, the, right in the box to tap it in. There was concern with VAR over a handball with Kai Havertz. Last season, that would have been ruled out. So I guess there were changes in the rules. If, you know, I, I have to say when I saw it instantly, I did think, you know, I think that should have been ruled out based off of last season's rules. I don't know if they've changed anything, but that has benefited Chelsea tonight. So yeah, it's 3-3. Free, free. It's a point. It, it could have been a lot worse. I think a point, but I don't think Frank should. And I don't think we should be overly happy. I think we should be happy in the sense that this team showed a lot of character and there were leaders within that team to get us back into that game. But in terms of the opposition, in terms of how far away we were in that first half from the accepted standard to just even compete. I mean, the three goals, Thiago Silva, that's going to be really demoralizing for him on his first game in the Premier League to make that mistake. Uh, Marcus Alonso, um, it's difficult. And of course, there's a quick turnaround now to the Spurs game on Tuesday, which is naturally a massive game always against Spurs. I just, I wonder what, what Frank is going to do on Tuesday. I think that's going to be really interesting to me. I think there are certain players, I think all of Mason... And to be honest, Tammy Tammy didn't have an amazing game, but he was there for the goal at the end. Um, but I think in particular, Mason, Mason uh, Callum and Kai Havertz for me were really impressive in the game. I also want to give credit to Christensen because I think actually individually on his own, I think he did very well within the game. He made some key interceptions to stop uh, West Brom breaking on us uh, when his other defenders were out of place. Um, so, you know, I'm critical of Christensen on this channel, but I do think he deserves praise tonight. Um, it's very hard to know where we go next, to be honest, because that is a dire first half performance. There was massive concerns. I mean, that is not where we should be, the levels. I mean, I know fitness and sharpness and Frank has been stressing about preseason, but it's just so far away from what's expected for Chelsea. And I think there are going to be a lot of difficult conversations. Frank hasn't got a lot of time to work with the team going into Tuesday. I really hope that's a wake up call for some of the players going into this, uh, this season because the standards need to be raised. And I hope that there's a little bit more structure as well. I want to see Chelsea, as we saw at brief glimpses in that second half, especially with the Callum Hudson and the goal, a bit more connectivity. That's what we want to see, fluidity within that attacking play. All that attacking talent there, I just haven't seen enough of it in this season so far. I think a lot of our goals 
as was the case with the Mason goal, it's a moment of individual brilliance rather than collective team play. I want to see more of that moving forward and hopefully we'll see that in the coming weeks. I know I know, we always talk about Christian Pulisic and Hakim Ziyech being back, but defensively, once again, absolutely appalling. So those are my thoughts on an absolutely mental game of football. Please let me know yours in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you did enjoy it, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Follow me on Twitter at Son of Chelsea and I'll see you again.